back in perfectly, piece by piece. And you know, when an engine block drops, <laughs> it, it doesn't uh, fuss around. So you can use the comfort paste or bone, flesh, and cartilage yes. fomentation? That's right. Okay. That's right. And anything else internally? Use it internally. As well? Yes, Try definitely. And, and, and the person must always be given lots of comfrey to drink the uh, comfrey formulas, the um, green drink, uh, company p comfrey pills, comfrey tablets, uh, do everything but uh, use a syringe and put it in their ear. Okay. All right. And what about for insulin shock? Insulin shock. I don't know. Oh, pardon me. That's too much insulin. Uh, yes. Diabetic, diabetic coma when uh, they don't have enough insulin. When they don't have enough insulin. Right here is where we use large amounts of the pancreatic formula. If you can get it in fast enough. If you can't. If you can't, what do you do? I don't know. There's not. There's nothing I know herbal. Uh, all right. What do you do otherwise? Inject. Inject. Yeah. Get insulin. But it, assuming that the insulin is not available or something. All right, then give them the, the uh, regular pancreas formula. Okay, thank you. Dr. Christopher, a uh, question on sciatic neuritis associated with disc protrusion and without disc protrusion. Is there any difference? <coughs> sciatic is a condition that stems in nearly all of our cases from the sigmoid being ballooned or congested. And that sigmoid at where the descending colon comes down and turns, all right, as the sigmoid comes in to the area here, all right, the toxic poisons go down the sciatic nerve. And in doing this, they cause irritation. And that sciatic nerve will throw out the sacroiliac. All right. Uh, the condition that we have found the fastest is sometimes with using not only the lower bowel, but using the yellow dock liquid combination and massage over the descending and sigmoid area to bring that out. In addition, we use the nervines and massage the sciatic nerve area at the sacroiliac and on down the left leg with your uh, formula of B&B. &B. And with the disc protrusion? The what? Disc protrusion. Disc protrusion is done through bone flesh and cartilage now, when that is put on, it depends on the area that the disc is out in, whether it would be from the atlas axis on down or from the lumbar. Now, if it's a lower one, we put it on lower. Six days a week, week after week, and that disc will adjust itself, rebuild itself if it has to. All right. Dr. Christopher, what would you recommend for Parkinson's disease? Parkinson's disease is the incurables again because we're, we're stemming here from the middle. Uh, Dr. Christopher, um, I noticed that in uh, your analysis of people who have been on a mucosless diet that it tends to be very alkaline. Do you have any comment on that? Fruits, vegetables, grains, nuts, and seeds, if they are chewed properly, and this is taken care of so that the saliva is mixed with it, they will be at a pH 7 to 7, 4. Yes, but this is the key. If you are on a mucosless diet and you inhale it, it's not going to do you the good that it will if you masticate properly and get the saliva mixed with it thoroughly. And there is the difference in that pH. Dr. Christopher, is it possible to reverse a vasectomy? I don't know. I've been asked this a number of times. Uh, the, all I can say is I wouldn't have done it. In the, uh, well, anyhow, <laughs> that's as far as I can go. What were you going to say? Well, in medical terminology, the urine is supposed to be slightly alkaline. Slightly. And so we were just wondering why it, I mean, no, slightly acid. 
So we're, we're getting the reverse. But other parts of the liquids in the body are on the alkaline side too. So we didn't know whether this was normal or whether the original assessment by medicine of the way the urine should be. Oh, when it comes to the urine part of it, all I can say is I can't tell you, but we will give the kidney bladder formula and get that urine cleaned up. And that's the best we can go there. But with the fruits, vegetables, grains, nuts, and seeds, and properly eaten, because the saliva is one of our great controls on our pH, and if that's used properly, we'll get results. Dr. Christopher, what about um, food poisoning? Um, for food poisoning, you'd want to administer an emetic. Is that correct? Correct. But what about acid poisoning and caustic poisoning? Demulcents and enemas? You, you would use their, your comfrey. Comfrey. Your comfrey. Uh, now, here again, that comfrey paste, <coughs> remember, it's made up of wheat germ oil, honey, and comfrey. Now, that can take you orally. Yeah. And this is a great savior. But uh, with the other, we, we would use the emetic, such as lobelia or something like that, to bring it up. But for acid and caustic, you just put comfrey paste on top of it. Absolutely. And, and drink it. And that's it? Yes. No animus? No emetics. Oh, no. No. <laughs> I've heard you say before, don't knock the person's crutches out from underneath them before they're ready to walk. Somebody who's heavily medicated and is interested on going on an herbal program, what kind of advice would you give as far as um, trying to wean off the medication and taking the herbs? How far apart should it be so that they don't? This is an excellent question. Yes, we have said this for years. Don't ever take medicinal aids away from an individual. Oftentimes they can go into shock, as we know. Oftentimes many damages can be done. And so we taper. And there are some people brave enough to make that switch. Well, I'm not brave enough yet to do it. But here we have got, take your diabetes, just as an example. All right, we don't cut them off of their insulin. We have them continue using their insulin we build up the pancreatic area so that it'll make its own insulin. And then we watch the litmus paper or whatever guide we got. And as that insulin gets to a point where we don't need as much, we know that the body is supplying its own. And eventually it gets to a point where you don't buy anymore and the body is furnishing it all. Now so it is with other parts of the body. We, we just have to work on this basis. Dr. Christopher, as far as now, I've heard that some medications will, will counteract the herbs. Um, does that mean that you should take the herbs, like, say, an hour later than the medication? Or, or I'm just asking, you shouldn't take it at the same time, right? We always wait 15 or 20 minutes, even between herbs. So we would wait a little while in between. Now, I, I haven't heard, and I imagine there are some uh, that will uh, do a counteract job. But... Uh, I imagine after 15 or 20 minutes, this is what we generally do, is wait this long at least. Uh, Dr. Christopher, would a twitching in the eye be from the ear, be treated from the ear, a twitching, or would the eye uh, wash take care of it? Well, now twitching in the... It's twitching, this area here twitches constantly at this one moment, just really bad. All right, this might be the eye alone using the eye wash formula. But if you wish, go to the B&B &B tincture and get back here where the trouble could be. In fact, in this type of a case, we would use both because that motor nerve assists with the nerves in that area. And then if a person's really heavy on Valium and you want to get them off of it with the nine, nine nervine herbs, um, should you taper them? rather than take them immediately off of it? No, you do not. You give them the full dose of the nine nervine herbs because it's nothing but a food. Uh -huh. And then as... I meant taper the Valium. Oh, well, you taper the Valium off, definitely. Yes, uh, if the person is brave and they don't go into shock or something, you could cut. But we always advise a tapering. Okay, thank you. Uh, what would be the... Oh, keep sitting down, sorry. 
Uh, what, would be, <laughs> what would be the um, process in older people to follow in order to reverse senility? Or is there a process? Oh, there is a difference, yes, and I hope I don't get senile. Yes, I'll tell you. It happens that a person who has become quite advanced in this condition and they're being led around by the hand. And I saw one in the hotel the other day. I, I went sick all over. A man that was waiting for Mama to take him around. Uh, he had become senile. But in autopsy, you would find in so many of these cases, they have a perfect brain, but that brain has been turned to stone. And the first steps on reversing this is distilled water and using the slant board. But that slant board must be used very, very carefully because that pressure going down into the head can cause some difficulties. So you have got to watch this slowly as you go along. But we have a formula, uh, a memory formula, that goes in and assists this condition of rehabilitating the memory. If it is a really severe condition you want to clear in a hurry, you will speed it up by using the bone, flesh, and cartilage fomentation over the head area and down the upper cervicals, the top three cervicals. Dr. Christopher, in cases where uh, we have heart attack victims or shock victims where there's an unconscious state, how would you uh, administer the cayenne, for example, or possibly the anti-plague in the case of a shock victim? Would you uh, do this in the rectum, or how would you uh, get this into them? If it is a condition that we can bring with quick zonal therapy through the um, uh, through the um, solar, solar plexus, if we work it out quickly there, then give it to them. But otherwise, we do use a syringe into the rectum. Yes. Now with your cayenne. It'll, it'll do the job pretty quick there. Should it be hot or? Warm, so that it'll go directly into the bloodstream. Uh -huh. Dr. Christopher, what about just using a tincture of uh, cayenne or anti-plague and put it into their mouth? If they don't strangle, that's the one problem. If they don't strangle. So it, it, is, it is better if we can to use the rectal. Dr. Christopher, I have two questions here. What about a person who has been in a wheelchair for years as a result of a broken back? Is there a possibility of a recovery? There? Absolutely. Absolutely. A BF and C. A BF and C and using the nerve routine from the B&B &B right on through. Uh, we have seen these cases and we have seen them put back into active use again. And it's one of the great blessings of all times to know that someone else is alive once more. And the second question is, would you discuss your poke root formula for breast cancer as printed in the School of Natural Healing, or would something else be better? We'll go to the bone, flesh, and cartilage. Uh, your poke root is wonderful. It will leave scarring where the BF and C off times will not. But we have shied off from poke root because uh, the F well, anyhow, it's frowned upon, and we are not allowed to use it legally. There, there is a problem there. So we, we don't use that formula anymore ourselves. But the whole body, if it's worked on on a holistic basis, you'll see miracles. Dr. Christopher, I had a comment on senility. She's talking to a doctor in California, a special kind of chiropractor, who told me that many of the senile patients he finds that the coccyx is fused or stuck and that the coccyx is attached he said to a membrane that goes all the way up and around the brain that puts tremendous pressure on the brain and when he breaks this fusion gets it mobile again you know they they from that hunching you know how the old people are they they come up and the memory starts coming back so maybe there's an additional way to distilled water whatever else using the bf and c i'm glad to hear this because you see we, we have advised this for years when the coccyx is bent up, uh, sometimes broken off. Uh, we use the BF and C to bring this back, and when that is straightened out, and it'll straighten on its own, I don't care how badly curved it is, when it is fed properly with the BF and C, it will straighten out, 
And what I have taught it for is it brings circulation back into the hands and legs, the upper and lower extremities. Because whenever you have a coccyx condition here, it cuts that off. And I never thought of it possibly going into the brain area too. Okay, it's all connected. I like this. I think that's beautiful. I buy it. Okay. Thank you. We'll have to try this. Any of you seen it? No. We can't try it today. I'm sorry. And it, and, um, uh, what now? An abscess. an abscess on the appendix? No, under a appendix wound. I mean, it's a healed appendix wound, and there is an abscess underneath. The oh. Again, we have got to start cleaning out that bloodstream fast. They've got to have the red clover combination, but it should be accompanied with six to ten drops for adult, of course of the black walnut tincture and for the infected area if it can be reached use the bone flesh and cartilage over it or use a garlic paste over it in this case 30 minutes hot five minutes cold is a great assistance to it also doctors have said that it may be a um a foreign material in there, like a stitch or something that's in there, and they keep saying that it can take 13 or 15 years before it comes out, so you can just live with it. Now, let's start healing the body properly. And also, I have a second question. I don't know if I can pronounce this right. It's um, called myelinated um, nerve endings in retina, uh, which gives new sight in the eye. Could you still use that eye wash for that? That gives new sight? There is no sight. Oh, well, oh, no sight. I see. There's a little um, bit of sight, like this far, black, only in black, no colors. And um, this patient have been told that there will be, um, there's nothing you can do for it. And it's the worst case they've ever seen. It's uh, was a birth defect. All right, we've had enough of these birth defects and things of this type that have been healed, have been brought to what they should have had before. And so I say, there is nothing but try, because the bone flesh and cartilage is wonderful, sure. The eye formula is wonderful. The B&B &B tinctures formula is, is wonderful. And none of them have toxic herbs in them. They can't do any harm. Use them, because we have seen miracles on the eyes and other parts of the body by using these formulas. Thank you. Dr. Christopher, <coughs> on the senility, when you say slant board, are you talking about the whole slant board routine? Yes. Okay. And but it's got to be modified very carefully there because you can't use any, right. no more than having them stand on their head that, right. at first. Uh, and the second question, um, there's a person I know that w had a nerve cut during surgery and uh, experiences severe pain. Uh, is What do you suggest? That can be rebuilt with the bone, flesh, and cartilage. Okay. It can be definitely done, internal and external. Dr. Christopher, what would you do in the case of brain hemorrhage? Stroke, I mean, where the blood is pressing on the brain and there's pain and, and paralysis and... Here again, your bone flesh and cartilage has a fomentation over that head area. But we would speed that up with the B&B. &B. If you've got a condition close by the surface where you've got clotting or anything, go into your oak bark in assistance, in assistance to that. I have two questions. Um, when a person has been told that their circulation is good, and yet their hands and feet are always cold, what's wrong? <laughs> the thing that we've been discussing before, it might be that tailbone again. When the coccyx, the tailbone, has been either bent up or broken, it'll cause lower and upper extremity cold or heat. And we have seen some of the saddest cases that after using the bone flesh and cartilage over the coccyx area, we generally go up to the lumbar and down. That when this is healed, and we have seen cases where it has been broken off and it has come together and uh, gone into its proper shape again, the coldness has left or the heat has left. Okay, my next question. 
What causes flat fingernails? Flat fingernails? Well, it's supposed to be heart. I don't know. But uh, I, have a, I have a book on, on diagnosis for all parts of the body. I just haven't had time to get into it. You know the days are so short. But uh, I'll, I'll tell you, if you'll use the total M formula, which is taken from the bottom of Lake Bonneville, which is organic, those nails, even though they are ridged, even though they're out shaped, will eventually come into good looking nails. And this is one of the natural organic formulas will leave, leave no residue. Dr. Christopher, I'm sure you've had experience with heart attacks and strokes. Um, we've spoken of the initial treatment for that. Would you carry that patient through with you or would you get some verification from the um, the authorities or traditional medicine, let's say. Now, I, I, I'm not sure I quite catch. Uh, if you've got a patient that has a, had a heart attack. No, no, let's say initially you, you just come across someone who's having one. Yes. Or a stroke. Yes. And you treat them with, let's say, you know, the cayenne. Mm -hmm. and you stabilize it for the moment. Would you go to traditional medicine to get a verification on the heart, or would you carry it through, and what would you do? Oh, I see what you mean. We've had so many of these that we don't, uh, I, I get your point. No, we use the cayenne, and this brings them out of it, fine. But we find that if you throw a horse a bale of hay, uh, it won't starve right now, but you gotta keep throwing a little bit more hay. All right, so we continue either giving that individual cayenne or hawthorn berry in one form or another until we can rebuild that area. Sure, that, that's the way it goes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Dr. Christopher, I have a friend who was a boy playing with dynamite, blew both his arms off and his eyes out. The eye was shattered, it's still there, and the other eye is scarred. Is there any hope that that could ever Rebuild. There is always hope, my dear. I'll tell you, there are no incurable diseases, but this isn't a disease. This is an accident, and God has been good to us. All right, so we would alternate. In a case like this, I won't promise anything, but we would alternate the bone, flesh, and cartilage, which will rebuild the shattered and bring it back, and with the eye formula. We, flesh and cartilage fermentation, you mean? Yes, the area? yes, definitely. And uh, take it internally too. And then alternate with the eyebright formula. And there can be some great things happen. Sure. Dr. Christopher, it seems to me that sometimes a certain part of the plant helps a certain part of our body, like as if the bark of the plant helps our bark, our skin, and sometimes the seed helps our seed, like pumpkin seeds. Do you find this is the truth in herbology? This goes way, way back. This is absolutely correct because they used to say the walnut is made for the royal and the acorns for the peons. And they say the reason that the walnut is made for the great people is because it's a very complete nut. Now, to follow this through, let me cite it. On the outside of the shell, whether it's an English walnut or a black walnut, we have a fuzzy covering, which is the husk. Every nut has to be husked before it can be eaten. But on that husk, we have in it iodines, we have in it many of the trace minerals that are needed. And the old timers said the husk of the walnut is for the outside, the hair and the skin. The shell itself, when it is put into solution, is for the bonal structure. The very little, as you open an English walnut, you know, it has a, a little um, plastic or something covering in there little brown membrane. membrane. I'm glad you said that. I wish I had that membrane. All right. That is the one that they say is for the membrane that holds the brain against uh, and the uh, skull area. 
in the right areas. They say, as you open it up, <laughs> this, is, this is great. I mean, it's ridiculous, but it's great. But they say, as you open that English walnut, it shows the nut, which is a perfect brain. It's a perfect picture of the brain. And that's the brain food. This is for the gods. And the whole nut is for the gods. And for the peons, they can only use the acorn. <laughs> now, how far this goes, I can't tell you, but this goes way, way back. But what I'm showing, the same principle that you're asking. The husk is for the outside. The shell is for the bone. And the inside, the brain. Thank you. I have one more question. Are you allowed to tell us what was censored out of your book? The oh, yes. There's no problem there at all. We'll drink to that. <laughs> <laughs> in my book, I said, I, I had written in for uh, the female uh, AIDS as an example. We had uh, the female formula. We just put in the word Nufam. And for the hormone estrogen, we put in the word changes. And they didn't like those words because they were commercial. And so when we changed the book, all we did was write, scratch out changes, scratch out Nufam, but we still had the same formula. And this is a female formula, and this is a hormone estrogen formula. And that's all there was in the change, actually. They, they didn't like the whole book, but that's all they can legally hold. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Dr. Christopher, uh, when uh, a person is beginning to walk pigeon-toed, is there something that can be done to correct it and have their feet in the right, I don't know, poor shoes or what that started it? But, uh, well, now, on the average case, I couldn't tell you, but they gave me a a little boy up in Orem, Utah, five years old, that was pigeon-toed. And he'd got to a point where his feet started to fold under. And by the time he got to me, he was work walking on his ankles. And uh, it, it was a very, very sad case, but with reflexology and the three or massage, that boy work walks as straight today as I do. I. Uh, any physio, any person that will work on a holistic program and, and work on that area and, and do the oil massages and things can do great things with it. But sometimes when the toes cross one thing or another, it can be in the spinal area too. And so after you've tried the one, if it doesn't work, go into using the materials on the spine. Dr. Christopher, what would you do for traumatic compression? So you've got um, hemorrhaging in the, inside the, the cranium. We've had some of these cases, and in each case we have used the bone, flesh, and cartilage again. As a fomentation? As a fomentation, absolutely. This, this uh, is one of the fastest ways we've had of clearing this. Anything internally, B&B &B in the ears? Or? Oh. Anything that you can go ahead to help will speed it up. Yes, some of you will think that bone, flesh, and cartilage is really great. Well, it is. <laughs> the good Lord gave it to me. It ought to be great. It isn't my, it isn't, it isn't my formula. Uh, it was given to me. So I can brag it up, and I can say bone, flesh, and cartilage, and I'm, I'm not cringing down and saying it's my formula. I can say it's the Lord's, okay? Dr. Christopher. Yes. Uh, uh, Dr. Shook speaks of, when he talks of uh, uh, the heart uh, tonics, he speaks of uh, various tonics uh, to be used because of various uh, origins of the heart disease. Uh, so far, we've, we've only talked about Hawthorne. Uh, is, is it so that maybe other heart tonics should be used instead of Hawthorne for various heart conditions? There is a, a very fine thing when we come down to the heart. There is a condition wherein we can have several hundred different heart conditions, and they can all be from a different uh, uh, cause. I mean, from 
uh, broken heart. Mouth, mouth, oh, uh, we get that once in a while. But uh, no, the heart itself can be rebuilt as the eye is rebuilt by using the right type of herb. And the herb is the hawthorn. Now, Dr. Shook talks about it, and yet Dr. Nowell says the hawthorn berry will take care of any condition in the heart, regardless whether it's organic or inorganic. And we have found this is absolutely correct. We have taken people who have had leakage of the heart since they were born, carried around on a pillow as a baby, and at uh, over 60 years of age, they've come to us, leakage of the heart, and it's never stopped. And with Hawthorne Berry, in three years, that tonic, a half a teaspoon three times a day, has rebuilt that heart, and their medical doctor has given them a clean bill of health and tell them they can live till they're past 80 because they have no more heart problems than that individual lived till he's 81. See, that, that heart can be rebuilt if it's just given the food, and the Hawthorne Berry is a food for the total heart. Back to the BFDC. Can you say which of the herbs in there are the richest in potassium? Oh, I'd have to do some analyzing because there's 10 or 12 of them. Um, in, uh, in, in potassium, well, it's got black walnut in it. That is high. Now, I can't just run out of the air, uh, pull the balance of them out, but there are a, a number of them that are high potassium. But if we figure it isn't high enough, let's add to it by, by using your elderberry or your black walnut or your potassium broth. And I'd like to see every one of you have a cup of potassium broth every day. It's good for you. Where's the next one? What yes. do you think of using DMSO as a carrier to uh, increase the efficiency? <coughs> DMSO is quite an interesting formula. Where I ran across it first was years ago, I was in some of the lumber companies in the Northwest, and in one of the big lumber mills, they had a stream running out that was like a small canal. And as it was going out, one of the men who was in charge of the mill said to me, I wish you could do <coughs> something with this liquid running out here. It's going to waste. I said, what would you like done with it? And this is the statement he made. In this very ditch, a man fell in. He slept. And when he fell in, all that didn't get wet with the water material in this canal was his hand where he had reached up and grabbed a rope. And they said, and his neck and the hand. But before he fell in, he was covered with one of the most horrible dermatitis that we have ever known, and it couldn't be cleared. I told him to take the day off, go on home. So he did. And when he got home, he found that wherever this water from the canal had soaked him up, the dermatitis had left. It was fading away. But the only place that it was still there was where he was hanging on to the rope. And so the next night he took a bucket full of this water home and used it on his arm and neck and started to get results. And he said, we'd like you to take this over because we've never done anything with it uh, outside of we know that it's great in some way. Well, me, I'm chasing around and everything and, and I'd forgotten all about it. Then I read an article in Reader's Digest which told about how that they had used this same uh, liquid from the trees, and it's an herbal formula. They had used this for 
horses with arthritis and with many, many things. But because they had so many cures, so many wonderful things that happened, and yet the FDA found out that a rabbit that was treated with it got the pink eye. They weren't sure whether it was from the DMSO or something else, but they outlawed it and made it so that no doctor was allowed to have it in his offices or his home and could not treat anybody with it. And the only one that was allowed to use it eventually was a veterinarian. And the veterinarian had to